Okay, so I'm Kevin, I'm the organizer. I'll be giving a talk on the uh, principles behind GenServer. So we're gonna model a bank account in Elixir. And so some things we need to know, Elixir is functional and immutable. So everything is a function or a, a data structure. And once you kind of set a variable, you kind of can't change it. So that's kind of uh, inconvenient when you want to model something that changes over time. So we're going to model that in a, uh, a little makeshift gen server that we're going to build ourselves. So some things we need to know, IEX, uh, if, if you've <coughs> installed Elixir and Erlang, IEX is the uh, interactive console. So if you use Ruby, uh, IRB is kind of the same thing. Uh, so you can see, you can do one plus one, and it'll execute live in the uh, in the console. Okay, cool. So we've got some variables. You can say a equals one, oops, and pull up that variable again. You can also do a equals two, which you might expect it to throw an error and say, hey, it's immutable, you can't change anything, but there's some syntactical sugar in the background. So you could model your entire bank account like this and just say account equals zero, and then account uh, equals account plus 100. Ooh, I just deposited 100 into my account. But that's, we're not going to do it that way. That's kind of the cheesy way. So we're going to do it the, using a, a process, which is really, really cool. We'll show it in just a second. OK, so we got some, uh, you've seen some integers. Uh, some other things we need to know. We've got some strings. And we've got uh, tuples, which are just collections of stuff. And uh, that's like a list or an array. You'll, you'll, you'll get, you get into that in a little bit. Uh, we've got atoms, blah, 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 blah. That's a, like a symbol in, in Ruby. So it's a, a variable which is its own value and then you can't change it. And then we have anonymous functions. So we can say fun equals uh, fn, give it some parameters like world, and then uh, hello, uh, actually we don't wanna do that, we want name, and then hello with some interpolation. And does that look right? Let's try that. And then go fun dot world hello world. Fantastic. So that's an anonymous function. They're a first class citizen, so you can toss them all around. It's really cool. All right, everything in Elixir is a function, a data structure, or a variable which is bound to one of those two things. Functions are global but namespace, so we put everything into a module. And another cool thing is observer.start. You can go observer.start. And this is a, a GUI that you can use to see what your, uh, your applications are, are doing. This is modeling all your processes. Here's your application. It's got all, everything that's connected, and, and it'll be useful later. OK, so now let's get into what this account is. So we're going to put everything into a module, because everything has to go into a module. And we're going to call it account. That makes sense. And we're also going to have two uh, two functions here. One's going to be called new, and then we're going to initialize it with a balance, and then we're going to give it a default balance of zero. So that's going to be what we're going to start out with. And then we're also, and this will make sense in just a bit, do another one called loop, passing in balance. And so what this is going to do is it's going to start up a process, which is like this thing that's running off in the corner, and it's going to keep, uh, it's going to do stuff for you, but it's completely isolated. So we're going to have to send it messages to get stuff into it to tell it what to do, and then it's going to send us messages back to uh, get stuff out. So we're going to, to uh, do an anonymous function. Function equals, let's check my notes here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, loop, and we're going to pass in the balance. So what this is going to do is we're going to pass this uh, function around, and, and all it's, the, it's going to do is wrap this uh, call to loop balance, and, and when we we do spawn, which is how we're going to spawn a process, which is going to be running some stuff asynchronously for us, which is really nice. Uh, check again, the spawn our function. So this will spawn a new function, so we can do everything completely separate, and it'll immediately execute the thing that we're passing in this uh, loop dot balance wrapped inside. So we're going to call this. It's going to spawn a new function or spawn process passing in function, and oh wait, that's not right. Yeah, OK, that's right. And it'll uh, uh, execute loop with the, the balance that we're passing in. OK, so things that we need to do with our, with our loop 
is we need to, so down here we're going to say loop and let's see what I was doing. Oh, that's not right. Let's get that. So this loop here is the, the server process. So what we're defining up here is like client code. So uh, client, and we can say this is like server up here. All, all the stuff, all the functionality is being defined in the same thing, but this is what you're going to be interacting with, and this is what's going to be ex the implementation that's underneath. So when we, when we do that, we, we need to send it messages. So it's going to be a process that's going to be running, and we're going to send it messages to, in order to tell it what to do. And we literally just use the command send, and then you can send messages to that process. But it has to know like, to be able to retrieve those messages from uh, its mailbox. Literally every process has a message queue called mailbox, and you have to actively go out and receive those messages. So there are a couple messages that we're going to probably want to send to our bank account. Things like uh, we want to deposit something, we want to withdraw something, and we want to check the current balance. So this right here, we can see this is a, a tuple. We talked about that here, a collection of things. And this is the format that a lot of your messages are going to take. It's going to sort of like the, the title of your message here. We just have an atom of message. And then sort of the payload of the contents. So if we want to do something like deposit, and then not only do we need to tell it that we want to deposit something, but we need to tell it how much we want to deposit. And then this is going to be sort of the start of the block of code that you want it to run. So some other messages we might want to send is uh, withdraw, and then how much we want to withdraw. Uh, we can line that up a little bit. And we could also do things like, oh, I want to check the balance. Uh, and with there, it doesn't need to know anything as of right now, other than you just want to check the balance. But we'll have to send in some more information in just a bit. So it's going to be, uh, and then the last thing, let's see where, yeah. OK. Yeah. And so it, because the server needs to be running uh, sort of an infinite loop, this uh, receive here is a blocking, uh, blocking block of code. So this up here is going to be running in one process, and the loop is going to be running down here blocked, but they're, but they're completely separate. So the, anything that blocks in loop is not going to block in the, uh, the process that's calling new. So we're going to have this. It's going to be calling itself uh, recursively for infinite, infinite. Uh, but this receive, because it's blocked, is like this ratcheting mechanism. Every time it calls itself, all it's really doing is resetting to the waiting for a message. The receive is, I'm waiting for a message, and once I get a message that matches one of these formats, I'm going to execute the code associated with that. And then when it's done, reset and start waiting for new code. Get a message, execute the code, uh, wait for uh, uh, another message to come in. And OK. So I got a little bit fancy there. All right, so what we're going to do is we have to send this uh, thing a message. And we'll define some more client code. And we'll say deposit. And what we're going to do, because we, we literally have to call the command send to send a message to this other process. And we're just going to send. We need a destination. It needs to know which process you want me to send this message to. Uh, so we'll say uh, the, uh, the account. This is the account that I want you to send. And I want you to send a message of deposit uh, and amount. Is that right? Let's see. Send. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll say account amount up here. So we, we can uh, call this new, creating a new process. And then we can send to that process a message saying, I would like to deposit into that account this much money. And the same thing with uh, withdraw. <coughs> this time, send it the withdraw. And then we're also going to want to be able to check the balance, because that, that makes sense. Check the balance. We don't need to send any additional information yet. Send to that account the message of balance. Cool. All right, so we're able to send these messages to the server, and right now it's not going to do anything. It's going to receive the message and say, all right, well, you didn't tell me to do anything afterwards. So what we want to do is we want to, 
We definitely want to reset into the wait for new message position. So we're definitely going to do recursion here, calling uh, itself. And we got to do it on all of these. Whoops. There we go. And the way we're, we're going to sort of mimic mute, mutability is by every time you call the loop function again, now we're going to pass in a changed amount. So now instead of saying uh, uh, balance, this would just, you would keep the same starting balance over and over and over again. Now we're going to say when we deposit, we want to start the loop over again, but with a balance plus the amount that we told it to. And when we withdraw something, we want to start over again minus the amount, the amount that we've told it to do. And when we call balance, we want to pass. We have to pass in the balance again because we don't want it to change anything. Now, when we send it a message, uh, these two these two messages are going to execute this code and this code, updating the balance either up or down. This one is just going to evaluate that. Oh, well, I started over again, but you didn't get anything out of it. So we're able to send information into the process with send. And to get information out, we're going to use send again. So not only is it going to call loop starting everything over again, but we needed to send the message back out. Because everything is so isolated, uh, it's, it's difficult to, uh, it's very controlled to get information in and out of any given process. So it's going to send the message back. And where are we going to send it? Let's call it parent, just because I want it to be. And we're going to send it a message, or it's going to send back a message of balance, balance. And when we do that, we need to make sure that when we send messages to the process, it knows where to send it back. So it's like you're sending it a self-addressed envelope. Send it, here's an envelope, just put the thing in there that I told you to do, stick it in the mailbox, and I'll get it. So when we send the message to the, the server, you're saying, hey, send me a message back. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to put the message in the mailbox of the calling process, and now we have to actually go out and get it. So we do that with receive again, and it's going to be a message that looks like this. Balance, balance. And all we really wanted that to do is just say balance. So let's check to see if that, <laughs> I got that right. Cool, balance, balance, balance. Send to the thing. Oh, right, one more thing. Well, we send, we need to give it a self-addressed envelope with just self. That's the, the, the process ID that you're currently in. We're going to send that to this other process and say, send all your messages to this. This is who I am. Send that to me. And that is going to match here. Parent. So it's going to receive a message that says, balance parent. And you're saying, send back to the parent, whoever sent you this message, the following message. Balance. And inside it, include the current balance. Then start over again. Then when the balance receives the message, and it's just going to evaluate into the, the terminal. Uh, let's check. Mm, OK, cool. Maybe that'll work. Maybe it won't. Let's see. Oopsies. Clear. Cool thing in the, the term, uh, IEX, you can just use ls and make sure. OK, yeah, I'm in the right, the right folder. Uh, okay, so we're going to code.load file, and if I remember correctly, this is, uh, what is this? I don't know, right in, uh, let's see if that does it. Nope, okay. Uh, Count.new, so I'm going to be cheating and use my finished product now. And we're going to say account is account.new, and that's going to return the process ID. That's the process that we've spawned that's keeping track of all the stuff that we wanted to do. And we've initialized it to a balance of zero. 
So if we do a count, which is the, the module, the function, which is balance, this is the balance we want to check. We need to send it the, the, the process ID, which is a count. Let's not do that. And it's, we can see it's returned to us a message, and we've evaluated it to into the terminal. Zero. That's what we've uh, let's see, uh, initialized it to. So if we do account.deposit, and we want to deposit into this account the amount of 100. And when the message is successfully sent, you get the message returned back to you, saying, yep, we got it. And now we can call account.balance on the account again and see it's now at 100. It's been incremented. And account uh, withdraw from this account, say $50 or 50 whatever, account.balance from this account. Cool. So that is uh, a really common pattern that you'll find in Elixir, and so common that it's kind of like built into the language with a uh, module called Gen Server. It's a way for you to have uh, off to the side an asynchronous, asynchronous process that's able to store, pseudo store some state that can change or that you can change over time by sending in messages, and it sends messages back. And uh, that's it. That's it. That's that's Elixir. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> can you go down a little bit so we can see the loop? Yeah. So here's the deposit message. This is a little bit fancier. We're saying update it uh, and then passing in some anonymous function. So if you send a message that doesn't belong to this pattern, is it going to crash the process? If I send a message to the loop that is not matched to any of these messages, it will stay there forever <coughs> until you flush out all your messages, I think. Yeah. Okay. Is the error seen? Yeah, so the, the loop is always running, but it's blocked, so it's not really calculating anything. It's not going to run amok and, and chew up everything. It's just waiting there. You can also, for uh, your question, you can catch any extra message. Mm -hmm. So if you mm -hmm. just do like one more line, you can do just an underscore, and that catches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any, anything else that comes in, just kind of throw it away, or okay. report an error, or whatever you want to do. Anything else? So I was curious. I'm yeah. kind of new to Elixir. Um, how does it keep track of that state? Because I see that you're sending it a value and it's using an immutable data flow. Mm -hmm. but how does it know what it had before? So right here, we've got the balance, and that's being passed in by the initialization. Yeah. And when it goes to call another uh, itself again, I, and this is just how I think it works. Because it's tail call recursion, Got it. then you can throw away everything that happened before and start over again. Yep. So it just has a reference from whatever exited before. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Anything else? Exciting stuff? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Robin, give it a shot? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So that's all I've got.